Good morning, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here today to address this very important issue why Japan and Europe should work more closely together. Well, let, allow me to uh, address this issue from uh, trying to understand the general situation of Japan and the EU in strategic and economic perspectives. After two world wars, Europe tried to overcome the old balance of power system and replace it by a system based on cooperation and even integration. Um, I think it's a different system. To understand the EU means also to understand this systemic difference. The security threats, conventional and unconventional alike, are emerging not any longer inside Europe, but, and this is a new understanding for the Europeans, forced by the reality. Uh, the security threats are emerging from uh, our neighborhood. And Europe, and this is an important geopolitical difference between Europe and Japan, we are not an island nation. We are many nations on a continent. But this continent is closely connected to Asia. Therefore, Eastern Europe, the neighborhood with Russia, is a permanent concern for the Europeans. And we had to learn it again in the hard way after the occupation of the Crimea Peninsula and with the war in uh, Ukraine, that this is a challenging neighborhood. Nevertheless, it's a neighborhood. And the definition of neighborhood is that neighbors do not change. Whether you like them or you hate them, whether you love him or not, makes no difference. You have to find a way to live peacefully side by side. That's the definition of neighborhood. And uh, I think this is one of the major challenges for Europe today in a strategic perspective. And it won't be easy uh, with the re-emerging Russia uh, to find uh, a kind of uh, living peacefully together, because there are, seem to be severe differences in interest. Secondly, after Eastern Europe, it's the Middle East and North Africa, which is a huge challenge, strategic challenge for the Europeans, and especially in the Middle East today. Um, but there, I think, is also a strategic interest of Japan, knowing uh, your uh, energy dependency from the Middle East. The Middle East has also the potential to develop in the global system in the 21st century into the role of the Balkans in the early 20th century. It might be an extremely dangerous place. As we have seen now in Syria, we see a kind of civil war. We see that this civil war is a platform for a fight about regional hegemony uh, between Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia. And we see also the risk of a confrontation of big powers. When Turkey shut down uh, the Russian plane, uh, Turkey is a member of NATO, so it, the risks are there and uh, they will continue. For Europe, it's a huge challenge to deal with these risks. And I don't believe that in the short term the Middle East can be changed substantially, but it must be contained at least. Otherwise, uh, this will emerge in a serious threat for global uh, peace and stability. And North Africa is an important uh, uh, region for Europe, where we see also risks and challenges. East Asia is in a very different situation. East Asia, at least this is my reading, lives still under a system of great power, even nuclear power rivalry, which can lead to great power conflict or even confrontation. And if you look to the regional situation, it's not, I wouldn't say, comparable with uh, the situation in Europe, but it has also its challenges. The Korean Peninsula, the East and South China Sea, um, the rise of China as a challenge for the regional system. In uh, 
But in strategic terms, both sides, Japan and Europe, have also important elements in common. Japan's as well as Europe's security depends, depends decisively on the security guarantee of the United States, and both sides are not and will not be strategically engaged in the respective region. The Europeans will not be present in East Asia, as Japan will not be present in a strategic uh, perspective in uh, Europe. Of course, peace in Europe as peace in East Asia is extremely important for global stability and peace. But neither will be the EU directly strategically engaged in East Asia nor Japan in, or in Europe or its neighborhood. Nevertheless, both sides should continue in a strategic dialogue, in a more intense strategic dialogue, dealing with the future of multilateralism, because I think Japan and Europe can play an important role uh, in designing the future of multilateralism in a globalized world in the 21st century. Let me also touch an issue which might be a little bit more delicate, but uh, I think it's important uh, to be addressed. Europe went through two major disasters, World War I and World War II. We, especially in Germany, here in Berlin, if you are here in Berlin with open eyes, you will see uh, the remnants of the history of, uh, let me say from a German perspective, terrible history. Uh, but uh, this was the history. Uh, we know as Europeans, and especially as Germans, how to heal the wounds of the past and go successfully through a process of reconciliation. We can share these experiences with our friends because we know that healing the wounds of the past can contribute to peace and stability in the present. Let me now switch to the economic perspectives for a deeper cooperation. And uh, looking to the Japanese-European relationship it's astonishing. I mean, the reality is uh, we have uh, long-standing and uh, good trade relations, but there is still enough space to improve these relations. Um, for both sides, relationship with US and China in economic terms are very important. These are the most important trading partners for both sides. Both countries are the main trading partners, um, respectively, and it should be in our common interest to strengthen other options too, because such a strengthening will also enhance our respective roles in the relationship with our main trading partners. So I think this is, based on interests, one of the most important reasons why we should cooperate closer together. We have to offer a lot from both sides, and we can enhance our position in dealing with our two most important trading partners. Europe is since the year 2000 the third biggest trading partner of Japan. But as I said before, there's still a huge potential to increase our trade and investment. The ongoing negotiations about the free trade agreement uh, would be extremely important. But let me be frank here on the friends. In Europe, the biggest concern in increasing the trade with Japan are the non-tariff barriers, as you know very well. And to overcome or to find here solutions, compromises, I think um, would be extremely important. And such an agreement uh, between Japan and the EU would be a very strong signal. Let me analyze a little bit more in the detail the potential of cooperation. For example, cooperation in the IT sector. Um, usually, the world is divided in two. There is Shenzhen on one side and Silicon Valley on the other side. But I think uh, cooperation of Japan and Europe in the IT sector 
uh, can create a very important contribution in shaping the future of the global IT world. Then both sides are strong and competitors in the automotive sector. But this offers also a huge cooperation opportunity. Um, the future of autonomous driving, for example. Industry 4.0, as we call it. Japan is very active in that. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity where uh, competition and cooperation can offer um, advantages for both sides. Then the whole variety of green and alternative energy technologies. There, Japan is also strongly engaged. And I think a cooperation between the Europeans, who are also very engaged in these sectors, and Japan can offer new opportunities as a cooperation in the future of so-called connected home. So all these future technologies, I think, offer a great opportunity for the future cooperation. But let me end, as a former politician, with one remark. Uh, the European, at least from a German perspective, um, Japan's presence in the living room of ordinary citizens, I think, is underestimated on the Japanese side. Every weekend, uh, great uh, Jap Japanese soccer players are there. And I guess on the other side, it's also there is a serious interest uh, of soccer fans in Japan about what their players, many of them are playing also in the national team, are doing in the faraway Germany. So I think this is also an opportunity on a broader people-to-people -people platform, which can be used and should be used. So from that point of view, ladies and gentlemen, I see a huge opportunity, and I hope that the conference uh, today and tomorrow uh, can uh, develop some of these opportunities for the future in the common interests of our, uh, well, I can't say two nations because Europe is not a nation, we are many nations, uh, with the many nations and the one nation in Japan. Thank you very much. <laughs>